Welcome back to another m -m 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 Micro Sound Bites. I'm Stratus. And I'm Gaz. And today we are going to be talking about Ask Selection, which is just another option similar to Get Response. So basically it's a way to, to have a list of objects that are being read to the user and ask them which one they want to choose. And with that, I think we'll get right to it. So we're going to take a look at the init file here. Unlike last time where we kind of inserted the lines, there aren't very many to add this time. So we went ahead and added them in advance. The first one that we added is a list of three things to hold your ice cream in, whether it's a cup, a regular cone, or a waffle cone. The rest of the toppings validator doesn't change. So we're moving down into the handle, the shop ice cream. For the keen observers, you'll notice that after the toppings that we covered in the last video, we now have a speak dialogue for the holder request. And then we've got this holder equals ask selection. And so that's what we're going to kind of deal with today. So I don't think we need to talk too much about what's happening with the speak dialogue other than to say the holder equals self ask selection. We'll just simply read out the list of the holders that I showed you right at the top, and then it will prompt you for which one. So in order to give it some sort of introduction, we have Mycroft saying a, a short dialogue, what would you like to have your ice cream in? With that, I think I'll hand it off to Chris and he can kind of walk us through some of the options for Ask Selection. So Ask Selection is a way of getting a response from the user in a very controlled, very specific way. So it's probably easiest if we just go through the, the arguments here. So the first argument is going to be a list. You know, in our case, it's that, that list of three strings. As you just said, Mycroft is going to read those, that list in order and place an or between the last two. So it's a list of two, it'll say red or green. If it's, if it's our list of three, it'll say a comma B or C. And if it's only one thing, then it's, we'll probably just read a single item, but I don't know why you would be using it if you're only giving, <laughs> giving people one option. And so once it's read that, it's then going to read the dialogue in the second argument. This is an optional argument. So if you don't put anything there, it just won't say anything. It'll just read the three options and then open the microphone. The data object is specifically related to that dialogue file. If there is any, just like with speak dialogue, if there's any dynamic data that we want to populate in, uh, in the dialogue file, then we can do that. If we stopped there, that, that would work in 99% of the cases. The remaining two arguments, what is it? The fourth one there, minimum confidence. So the way that our selection works is that whatever the user says, it's going to perform some fuzzy matching to see how likely is it that it's one of these options. If we used it with our toppings example before, where we had things like nuts or whipped cream. If someone said cream, it's not going to match exactly, but there's going to be a confidence level that it is the same as this other item. And so we can, we can change how confident we feel we need to be for that to match. So obviously if you make that a really big number, like closer to one, it's going to require it to be very close to the actual option and closer to zero means that it's going to match anything. It's still going to return the highest confidence levels. So that's, that's useful, but. Anyway, so that's minimum confidence. Anything under that, like if, if no option, you know, meets that minimum confidence level, then it will return none because the user didn't make an appropriate selection. And finally, we have a numeric argument, you know, by default, it's false. If you turn it to true, it's going to add a number in front of each of your options. So rather than saying cup, regular cone or waffle cone, it's going to say, would you like one, a cup? two, a regular cone, or three, a waffle cone. That may or may not make sense in different scenarios. So we, we turned it off by default, but, but it's there if you want to use it. It's also a little bit helpful because, you know, most of the time people are going to respond to a selection request by using the name of the thing. So, you know, they'll say, can I have a cup, you know, whatever. Um, but they can also use what's called an ordinal or, you know, a, a number, the number of the, the item in the list. They said, which of these options would you like? And I said, I'll take the second one. Then you would know that I'm referring to the second option that you read out. 
and and Mycroft uh, understands that as well. So it's just going to take whichever the second item in that list is and select that one. The numeric argument is really just about the dialogue that's spoken and whether whether those numbers are added in or not. But yeah, that's it. Like it's it's a pretty straightforward one, but it's a lot cleaner than get response if it meets your needs. It's more constrained, but it means that it's a bit easier to use and it's it's certainly cleaner in, in terms of code. But maybe we should go try it out. Absolutely. So through the magic of the internet, we're going to trigger the skill and make sure that it works properly. And we'll be back with that. And you can see here, what would you like in that? And that's our dialogue file. And then it gives us our choice. And in this case, we're going to go with cup. You get a match. And the reason why it matched is because we put in the confidence level there. So I did put cups, but it got close enough to the cup argument that it was able to figure out what it was that we wanted. So we ended up with a chocolate ice cream cone in a cup with nuts. Perfect. And I mean, the confidence level is, is useful. You know, in this, in this example, you look at regular cone versus waffle cone. And so if someone just said cone, then we wouldn't want to match with one of those. We'd, we'd want to make sure that we know which type of cone that they want. Whereas if they said waffle, then we could be pretty confident that they're choosing the waffle cone and not the regular cone. It was ask selection. It was pretty simple. I don't think there's too much to, to wrap up here. You have a, it will read a dialogue file if you need to. It has a, a list that you feed in for the options that you give it and you can specify things like a confidence level to make sure that the match is more or less strict and you can also have it read out as a list so would you like one an apple two an orange three a banana um, but that's off by default and aside from that it was pretty straightforward i think we added three lines of code and we got a similar a similar outcome as git response so I think that's kind of it for that, unless there's something else you'd like to add. No, I'm not sure if I mentioned that even the, the or that is placed between the, the final two options will be translated. So it's going to use the localized version of, of that string um, for whatever language the user is in. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. I think uh, I'm, I'm really interested to know whether people watching along are finding these slightly deeper dives on specific methods useful um, or if there's some other content that you're more interested in us diving into um, around Mycroft development, what's going to help you get the most out of your voice assistant? Did you see Tony's comment from last time? He left a comment asking us to cover something specific and I said, uh, you know, we oh. will definitely take a look at that when, when, once we've cleared our docket. So that's a good example of uh, yeah, people trying awesome. to put things on our on our radar that they'd like us to cover. Cool. Thanks, Tony. All right. Well, until next time. Until next time. Ciao. Ciao.